Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Southern Hills. Uh, we are glad that you chose to be with us this morning. Uh, we do have several of our number that aren't with us this morning. They're over in North Carolina on our annual ski retreat. So if you would, keep them in your prayers as uh, they are skiing this weekend and uh, planning on heading back tomorrow morning. Uh, ladies of the congregation, please don't forget the upcoming um, Soul Sisters Day. It'll be here at the building this coming Saturday. And uh, we'll start at 1030. If you have any questions, please see Jennifer Miller. And uh, registration is available on the uh, website. Also, uh, next Sunday evening, following the evening services, uh, we'll be having a wedding shower for Will Harib and his bride-elect, uh, Rachel Tracy. There will be a fellowship meal, and uh, the members are asked to bring sides for this. And also keep in mind, we will have some additional visitors from the church that Will preaches at. And uh, so just please plan on bringing enough to feed them as well. Uh, the SHARE group will be having their next activity on January 31st. And if you're interested in that, there is a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Please do so. Uh, other details can be found in the bulletin. Uh, this morning's message will be brought to us by Brother Jacob Winkler again. We appreciate uh, Jacob and his dad filling in uh, during our minister search. And please uh, reference your bulletin for any other announcements. As we uh, begin our worship, if you would, please pray with me. Lord, we come before your throne this morning thanking you for another day that we can enjoy. Lord, even though it's cold outside, we see the beauty of your creation. Lord, we see the snow on the ground and the ice that forms, and Lord, it's just beautiful, and we thank you for that. We thank you for all the many blessings you've given us, for our families, our friends, this church here at Southern Hills. You've blessed us beyond belief. We pray as this congregation begins a minister search, you please be with the elders as they reach out and take in applications and review resumes and try to find the next man to fill this position. We pray you please guide them in this process. As we prepare to worship this morning, we pray that we can clear our minds and thoughts and focus solely on your word and your plan for us. We pray that you please be with those that are on the ski retreat this weekend. We pray for safety for them while they are skiing as well as whenever they're traveling back tomorrow. We pray that you please be with Miss Minnie. We're glad that she's been able to get out of the hospital. She's in a rehab place ward. We pray that she can have a speedy recovery and return home as soon as possible. We also pray for Dolores McMurray and her cancer that she is dealing with, Lord. We pray that she's pleased with the doctors and nurses tending to her and her treatment. I pray that they can be able to eradicate that as soon as possible as well. Lord, we love you. We thank you most of all for your son, and we thank you for the example that he set. But most of all, we thank you for the sacrifice of him dying on Calvary's cross. We pray that we can never forget that. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Good morning. We'll begin our song service this morning by singing number 977.
Before opening scripture and prayer, we'll sing number 585, Soldiers of Christ Arise. If you can, please stand with me while we sing. Please be seated. Just in case you're wondering, we do plan to go ahead with our regular Sunday afternoon or evening worship service at five. So if you can be here, we hope you will be but please be very, very careful, both driving and walking. Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 57. Now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. So they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, praising God. Then fear came on all who dwelt among them, and all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, 
the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God with which the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. So the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place when Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Jerusalem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Will you bow with me, please? Our Father in heaven, we're so very thankful for the beginning of a new week. This day belongs to you, and we're thankful, Father, that you are our God. We're thankful for this avenue that you call prayer. An opportunity for us at any time as your children to talk with you, to thank you, to praise you, glorify your name. And Father, yes, at times we even need help and we ask for that. Father, we're so very thankful for your son for that unbelievable sacrifice. And in just a few minutes, we're going to partake of that memorial. Help us set our minds right. Help us remember. Thank you, Father. Father, we're thankful for the plan of salvation that you so thoughtfully put together. For without it, we would have no chance to be with you in heaven one day. Thank you, Father, for your church. Father, we're thankful for specifically this wonderful congregation and the people in it. We're thankful for the love that we all share. We're thankful for the opportunities that we have to love each other. And Father, we're also aware of the times where we need to lean on each other. There are several, Father, that are in need of that encouragement at this moment. We ask you to be with the Lincoln family. Continue to be with Miss Minnie. Continue to give her strength. Father, heal her. Father, we ask that you continue to be with Dolores McMurray. Going through cancer is a huge struggle, Father, but to go through it for a third time. We know that you do not give us more than we can bear, <clears throat> but Father, we ask you that you give her the strength to get through this, and that strength to include to lean on her family and her family to lean on us. Father, we're so very thankful again for this congregation, and as a congregation, we. We have a need, a need that needs to be filled, a need that we know that only you can provide. Father, as we look for a new minister, we, we pray 
especially a special prayer this morning for our elders and those that are helping them in their search. Give them wisdom. Give them the courage to make the right decision. And don't let them forget to constantly remember to look into your word as a source, a source of strength and a source of that wisdom. Father, we're thankful for our elders. We're thankful for our deacons. Every teacher that teaches a Bible class, every member of this congregation, from the youngest to the old, we're thankful. Father, as we enter a new week, help us enter a week where our lives are defined through our faith. So people could look at us and know that by faith, we love. By faith, we act. And by faith, they see the fruits of our labor, Father. Continue to, be, to bless us, Father. Thank you for Jacob and his uh, talents and abilities and his willingness to bring us the lesson this morning. Father, we're just simply thankful. In your son's name we pray. Amen. To prepare for the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 511. We'll sing all three verses. <clears throat> Each and every first day of the week, we observe the Lord's Supper in remembrance of the great sacrifice that was made by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six 26 says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. In verses 23 and 24, as we prepare for the bread, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, 
that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Our God and Father in heaven, we're so deeply grateful for the sacrifice that you made for us through our Savior Jesus. We assemble around this table this morning, Father, and remember his body that he gave on that cross, the pain and agony he suffered for us. Help us, Father, as we take this, to keep this in our memory and to take it in a way that is pleasing to you. Through Jesus' name, amen. First Corinthians 11.25 says, In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Our God and Father in heaven, we're grateful for Jesus, our Savior. He shed his blood on the cross. The blood which cleanses us of our sins, Father, and we're so deeply grateful for that. We take this cup now, Father, remembering that sacrifice. We pray that we will take it in a worthy manner, Father, and we'll always keep that sacrifice forefront in our minds that we may be obedient and faithful to you to the end. Through Jesus' name, amen.
Our God and Father in heaven, we're so deeply grateful for this congregation of your church. We're thankful for each and every member, Father, and for the awareness that exists that all these gifts come from you and that we are but stewards of those gifts that your gospel may be spread throughout. Be with us this morning as we offer our gift, Father. Help us to do so in a cheerful manner. Help us to continue, Father, giving you the credit for all that we have and all that we are. We thank you, Father, through Jesus our Savior. Amen. If you're using the book and like to mark it, we'll sing number 781 as our invitation song this morning. Number 781. Before our lesson, let's sing number 134, Faith is the Victory. And if you can, please stand with me while we sing. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and pray.
please be seated. Good morning. It is good to be with you this morning as we all laid our heads down to rest last night. There was so much uncertainty whether or not we'd wake up and have an ice rink for roads and for our driveways and have our our grass filled with snow. Everywhere you went yesterday, the grocery stores were uh, pretty much barren. The hardware stores had their sleds out, and they had to dust the dust off the sleds, but uh, they had their sleds out. They were ready for the snow. All this uncertainty, but one thing was for sure, the Lord's people would gather, and at some point in time during the day, they would worship the Lord. And so it's good to be with you this morning. In Matthew, the ninth chapter, we come across Jesus amongst uh, the, the middle of his ministry, and here he's beginning to perform many miracles. In Matthew 9, he comes across two blind men. And he wants to heal these blind men. And he says to the blind men, do you believe that I can do this? And of course, they said, yes, we believe. And in Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 29, Jesus says, according to your faith, be it done to you. According to your faith be it done to you. You see, when God comes to measure you, when God comes to sum you up, when God wants to give you a prize, it's not according to your fame that he will base it off of. Not according to your fortunes. Not according to your family. Not according to your friends. Not according to your feelings. Not according to your fate. But according to your faith. According to your faith will God measure you. In 1 John, the fifth chapter, verse 4, we read, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Do you have this victorious faith? Do you have a faith that has overcome the world? We see an example of the rewards that Jesus and God has given to all of his people in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. As you read through what we have commonly coined the uh, hall of faith. But in Hebrews 11, specifically verse 30, we see this victorious faith in action. Hebrews 11:30 reads, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. You see, Jericho lay before the children of Israel. The children of Israel had been promised a land that flowed with milk and honey by God. But between them and God's promise, between them and God's plan, between them and God's provisions was Jericho, mighty Jericho. And Jericho was a mighty city. It was great. It was a great city in its iniquity. It was one of the most ancient cities of its time. It was great in its iniquity. It was a city that was doing unspeakable things. A city that was worshiping idols, committing murders for their religion. It was a city that seemed to be invulnerable. Here lies Jericho with its mighty walls, strong. A city that seemed to say, try and come and take me and you will fail. It was a city that seemed to say to the children of Israel, stop, stay out, stay away from the fulfillment and the promises of God. Now, make no mistake, this city laid between the people of God and the promises of God. Today, there are still people of God. Today, there are still the promises of God. And today, there are still obstacles. There are still things that lie between you and me and the promises and the plans and the fulfillments of God. 
Oh, the devil will cause some great evil that will come between you and the will of God and the plan of God. Some great evil that will say to you, Stop! You can go no further. What is your Jericho? What is your Jericho? Perhaps, perhaps it's a family problem. Perhaps it's financial issues. Perhaps it's an unhappy marriage. It could be an unholy lifestyle. Your Jericho may be an unhealthy body. It may be uh, unfulfilled dreams, unrecognized potentiality. What is your Jericho? More importantly, how can we conquer our Jericho? By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Do you want your walls to fall down? Do you have this conquering faith? You see, faith is the link that binds our nothingness to His almightiness. Someone once said, Doubt sees the obstacles. Faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night. Faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take a step. Faith soars on high. Doubt questions who believes. Faith says, I, I. I believe. Do you have this conquering faith? This morning, we're going to study Joshua, the fifth chapter. And there are four things that we are going to be looking at. We're going to see the worship of faith. We're going to see the work of faith. We're going to see the weight of faith, W-A-I-T. And then we're going to see the word of faith. The worship, the work, the weight, and the word. You got that? Here we go. Turn to Joshua, the fifth chapter. In Joshua 5, starting with verse 13. Now, we need to understand the setting here before we read verse 13. You see, the Jews had now come out of Egypt, and uh, they've crossed this, uh, this barren, this burning and blistering land, this desert wasteland. And they've come across Jordan and into the land of the Canaan. And they see the land that is flowing with milk and honey. And right smack dab between them and what God promised them was Jericho. And so we pick up in verse 13 of Joshua chapter 5. When Joshua was uh, by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, a man was standing before him with his drawn sword and head. Uh, and Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or are you for our adversaries? And he said, No, but I am the commander of the army of the Lord. Now I have come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take off your sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. The first component to having a conquering faith is the worship of faith. Now here's Joshua, a general. He's out on uh, reconnaissance. He's looking to see what the next obstacle would be that they, the children of Israel, would have to face. He's someone who's wanting to devise a strategy to put something together so that they can be victorious and as he is scouting, he sees the walls of Jericho, and then he becomes uncomfortably aware that someone is by him. So he draws his sword, he wheels around, and he comes face to face with another individual who has their sword drawn. And he says to them, are you for us or are you for them? And the answer, no. <laughs> How uncomfortable would that be? You have no clue if you're about to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. No clue if you're going to be victorious. And all you're doing is simply asking a question, friend or foe? And the answer, no. What is it that is being said here? He says, no, I am not for you. I am not for them. I am the commander of the lords of hosts and his armies. He's saying, I did not come to take sides. 
I came to take over. I came to take over. Now, who is this that Joshua has met? Who is it that Joshua has come face to face with? Why, it is the pre-incarnate Christ. Jesus is standing here before Joshua, and Joshua sees Jesus. And he falls down to the ground, and he worships Jesus, and he worships the Lord. That is how we know this was no angel. Turn over to Revelations, the 22nd chapter. In Revelations, the 22nd chapter, beginning in verse 8, John, after seeing all the visions of heaven, he says this in verse 8 of Revelations 22, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. Verse 9, But he, the angel, said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow worker, a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book, worship God. Here Joshua Joshua is worshiping the Lord and Savior. He says, I am the captain of the Lord's host. Jehovah God, his Father, has given him command over all the armies of the heaven. Jesus, who is Lord of lords and King of kings, and Joshua is worshiping. And this is where his faith begins to grow. This is where his faith begins to build. It always grows. It always builds when you begin to worship God. When you begin to worship our Lord and Savior. In Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 2, we're told to keep looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. This is what Joshua is doing here. He's looking unto Jesus, and his faith begins to grow in his heart, and it begins to build. In 2 Corinthians the fourth chapter, verse 18. We are told not to look at the things that are seen, but to look at the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. In Colossians, the third chapter, verse 2, we're told to set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on this earth. Folks, we need to become more God-conscious and less problem conscious. We do not need to dwell on the walls of Jericho. We do not need to dwell on our problems. We need to gaze and dwell upon the Lord. If you recall in Matthew the 14th chapter, Peter sees Jesus walking on the water and he says, If it is you, Lord, command me to come out and walk. And Peter did. Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water and Peter was doing an amazing job of walking on the water as he was looking at Jesus. But then he takes his gaze off of Jesus. He sees the problems of the waves coming. He sees doubt and it begins to sink. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Your faith will never Never, never grow until you bow at the knee and you worship God. Verse 14 of Joshua, the fifth chapter. Joshua says, what does my Lord say to his servant? Have you said that? Have you said that? In Acts, the 22nd chapter, when Paul is... uh, having recollection of his trip to Damascus, on the road to Damascus, and when Jesus appeared to him, he says, I asked two questions. Who are you, Lord, and what would you have me to do? Joshua, face to face with Jesus, what does my Lord say to his servant? Have you said that? Have you said, I'll say what you want me to say, Lord. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll give what you want me to give. It is more important for us to understand and for us to realize that we need to be on God's side and not have God on our side. People will say, oh, I want to have God on my side. You can forget it. It will not happen. Joshua said, are you for us or are you for them? And he said, no, 
I've come to take over. We need to realize God's awesomeness. We need to realize God's mightiness. We need to realize God's holiness. He is Lord. The worship of faith. That is where you begin to grow and to have a conquering faith. But we move on. In chapter 6 of Joshua, we see the work of faith. The work of faith. Look at verses 1 through 5. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. That means its walls were shut, the gates were closed. None went out and none came in. Verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams, horns, uh, before the ark. And on the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when uh, they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. What uh, was God's plan for victory? It was a strange one. Remember, Joshua was a general. And so Joshua is expecting He's expecting uh, Jesus to tell him and the Lord to tell him, uh, go, and, uh, go and dig trenches. Go and make some earthworks, some battlements. Uh, go dig some tunnels. We're going to go under the wall. Uh, go build some ladders. We're going to go over the wall. Go gather some stones so that we can hurl it at the wall and make it crash down. No, that was not God's plan. What was God's plan? March. Gather your men and walk around the walls you're going to do it once every day for six days and then the seventh day you're going to do it seven times what a strategy (laughs) can you just hear these men of war as they're walking around can you hear them saying what are we doing we're walking in circles why are we not fighting what are we doing But they were doing something. What were they doing? They were obeying God. Now, they they might not have understood what they were doing, but they were obeying God. You see, there are going to be times that we do not understand what God has said, but it's important that we obey God. We show the work of our faith through obedience. In John, the 14th chapter, verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. In 1 John, the 5th chapter, verse 3, it's written, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Now, at some point in time in our lives, growing up, and for those of you who have children, you may have been asked this question, Why? Why do I have to do that? And what was the answer? And what is the answer that you as a parent give? (laughs) Because I said so. Now, you're not doing it to be harmful to them. You're not doing it to be malicious. You're doing it because you have their best interest in mind. Here we have it. God said it. We must do it. Folks, the Bible that you hold within your hand is not a Bible that is first and foremost to be understood. It is a book, a Bible that is to be first and foremost believed and obeyed trust and obey for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey we must use our faith and we must work our faith for we're told in James the second chapter verse 17 that faith without works is dead now the people of this world will not understand what we do and why we do it thus thus we're told in 1 Corinthians 2 14 And so we see the children of Israel marching and those who uh, are in Jericho looking down at them and laughing at them and jeering at them and looking and saying, look at them march, march, march. They don't know how to fight. Oh, we've got this in the bag. We're going to be victorious here. They do not understand. In 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verse 18 through 21, 
Paul writes, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. Did you hear that? The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning. I will thwart Verse 20, where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. The worship of faith is to bow at the knee before the Lord. And what is the work of faith? The work of faith is full, prompt, glad, unreserved, and unquestionable obedience. The work of faith. We move on to see the weight of faith. W-A-I-T, the weight of faith. Look at verses uh, 14 through 15 of Joshua chapter 6. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. And so they did for six days. On the seventh day they rose early and the dawn of the day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. And it was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. Now here it is. Seventh day they rise early and they walk around the city once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. What would have happened? If they would have said, I'm tired. We've been doing this for six days. And now we think it's going to make a difference on day seven to walk around it seven times. I've done it six. I've seen nothing, not even a crack, not even a shake. I'm done. I quit. If the children of Israel had said that, perhaps the walls of Jericho would still be standing today. But they were doing something. You see, God was teaching them a great lesson. He was teaching them a lesson in patience. The weight of faith. Waiting upon God. In Isaiah, the 28th chapter, verse 16, the prophet Isaiah writes, Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid As a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. Whoever believes will wait. In Isaiah the 30th chapter, verse 18, it says, Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him the lord waits to be gracious to you have you ever said a prayer to god and wonder why he hasn't answered here a faithful servant of god lays their petition before him lays their heart and pours it out and wants to know why god hasn't answered it's because we need to wait the lord waits why so that he can be gracious to you so that he can be gracious to you and to you. You see, God is waiting for you to wait. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 36. For you have need of endurance. This word endurance is translated to wait. So that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. God has made a promise to you. He's made that promise for you to have an eternal life with Him. He's waiting for you to obtain that promise. But you must wait for Him. The weight of faith. Have faith in God. Don't give up. Don't let in. Keep your faith. Faith is marked by endurance. It is not marked by quitting. And so we move on to our fourth note. That is the word of faith. The word of faith. Look at verses 15 and 16 of Joshua chapter 6. 
tell you what, let's just pick up at verse 16. And at the seventh time, when the priest had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. You see, the city had not fallen yet. The children of Israel walked around seven times. And on that seventh time, Joshua said, Shout, the Lord has given you the city. How can he say this? The walls are still standing. The gates are still shut. How is it that God has given us? How is it that Joshua can say, Shout, because the Lord has given it to you. It's because he believes in the word of God. The word of faith. Go back a few verses to verse 2 of Joshua chapter 6. Here in verse 2, it says, The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. Not that I will, not that it might, but I have given Jericho to you. God has said it and thus it will happen. Joshua believed in the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing you finish it by the Word of God. Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 17. You want your faith to grow? You need to hear the Word of God. Here you have Joshua. Joshua who worshipped God. Joshua who walked and worked with God. Joshua who waited upon God. And Joshua who listened to the Word of God. And that is why he could say, Shout! Because God has given you the city. Too many times we are not walking with God. Too many times we're not worshiping God. Too many times we're not waiting for God. Too many times we're listening to our own word instead of the word of God. No wonder, no wonder why it feels as if our faith is useless. How about a New Testament application? Hebrews the 13th chapter. Hebrews 13, verse, verses 5 and 6. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Look at it, verse 5. He has said, verse 6, so that we can confidently say, so that we can boldly say, He has said, so that we can have confidence and say, Joshua said, God has said this, and so he can confidently say, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. He has said, so that we can have confidence and we can be bold. He has said, so that we can have that confidence. But we must be listening to the Word of God. Here you have an individual who is wrecked with sin. An individual who's grieved by the ghost of sin in their lives. The sin that is weighing down upon them, this sin that is echoing in their souls a sin that reverberates within their minds a sin that keeps them awake night and day and as a child of God they go to his word they open up God's word and they read in 1 John 1 7 if we walk in the light as he is in the light We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. They read in verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God has said, you want forgiveness? We can confidently say, I have forgiveness. He has said so that we can confidently, we can boldly say, I love Jesus. I love that man. I have faith in him. I have a conquering faith. Do you want to know him? 
I can say with all confidence, your life will change, and it will change for the better. He has said so that we can confidently say. Do you have that type of a faith? Do you have a conquering faith? It starts with worship. And then you must work. And you must wait. And you must listen to the Word of God. You can have that kind of faith today. You can have that kind of faith at any point in time. But it's up to you to make that decision. Will you worship him? Will you work for him? Will you wait on him? And will you listen to his word? A conquering faith that will help you be victorious, that will help you overcome this world. His invitation is always open to you. And it's open right now as together we stand and sing. this morning. It's very encouraging to see that everyone came out and braved the cold. Uh, we do have Bible classes prepared and we'd love uh, for everyone to stay for our Bible classes this morning and be back tonight for our evening worship service at 5 p.m. We'll uh, sing one verse of number 756 and then be dismissed to classes in prayer. One quick announcement before our prayer. Dale Alden's class will meet here in the auditorium. Let's pray. Dear God and Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that you have blessed us with so we can glorify your name. We thank you for all the blessings you have given us. Could you help the sick and shut-ins as they need your comfort and strength? Could you please forgive us when we fall short of your expectations, and could you guide us throughout our lives? We pray that we take this lesson to heart. Could you help us arrive home safely? In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>